everybody, welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and go check out our Instagram pages where I post daily original photos and updates on our life and our animals. The links are also down in the description. For today's video, I think I mentioned this in the last video I just posted, that I was gonna show you how we are winterizing our reptile collection. Uh, we do not have a reptile room that is climate controlled. Uh, half of this room has got our reptiles and the other half of this huge sunroom is our homeschooling room. So it's a pretty big and open room, so I have to kind of add a lot of heat sources and do different things to make sure that our animals are getting the adequate heat and humidity and other things so they can thrive uh, during the winter months. Now where I live, we do get snow. Uh, this coming up weekend, we actually have a major cold front coming through. Uh, nighttime temps are gonna get down into the teens. So I have been going back through all of my reptiles, making sure that we have adequate heat sources, stocking up on certain things like bulbs and fixtures just in case something goes out in the middle of the night and I can't run to the store to get it. And I'll go over some of the things maybe I already did and showed in other videos and kind of do an update on those. So let's show you what we got going on. So the first enclosure we're gonna look at is Miss Nebula, who is our emerald tree boa. She's sitting there nicely. She is in the middle of her shed cycle. So what I do is she is already hooked up to a thermostat and she has, let's see if I can show you this. She has a double fixture back here with dual 100 watt heat emitters. Now, right now, that is keeping her temperature steady. I don't know if you can see the glare is really bad. All right, that's better. See, her temperature probe is right there. And I keep that around 92, 95. And that way it gives her a nice gradient all the way down. So if she needs to cool off, she can come down here. Right now, she's been hanging out here in the middle. Some nights I'll find her up here closer to the heat source. So she's moving up and down, which lets me know that I have a nice gradient for her heat. Now, if for some reason her heat drops too much, I do have extra fixtures to add an extra heat source on this side, or I have extra insulation, which I'll show you on our other shelf, then I could add to insulate this because obviously the heat escapes quite easily through these glass enclosures. So I have some different options if I need to to kind of upgrade and insulate her enclosure a little bit. Now for our Freedom Breeder rack, there is not much to insulate it. We got the option to do the insulating heat tape to kind of make the tape um, radiate up a little bit more. And you can't really see it, but there's some kind of insulation that's on the bottom of the heat tape in there to make sure that we're not getting heat escaping through the bottom. Now, if I need to, we do have an extra blanket to drape over this, or we do have the extra insulating board that I can set right here to kind of keep this heat inwards. We have not needed to do that yet, so I have not done that. Um, I've been checking the temperatures quite frequently as our temperatures change, and so far we have not needed to do that. The temperatures are holding, so we'll just have to see in the upcoming weeks if I'm gonna need to add those options. Now, this is our Home Depot DIY shelf. Now, last year, we had to kind of work through some of these issues as well. So last year, we had already added the insulating board here. And each shelf has the insulating board. And then it has the board right here to keep the heat in here. See, it has it along the back. So the temperatures in here stay pretty steady. Um, we, like I said, we worked through these issues last year with this, so we're pretty good on this shelf. Now, baby Arlo, we noticed his temperatures were dropping, and so I just recently went out and got a new fixture, and I put a 65-watt bulb in there for him to kind of raise his ambient temperature on the cage a little bit more. I'm sorry, did we wake you up from your nap? Yeah, so as far as his cage, we just added the different fixture and then I still have to rig up the thermostat for that. So right now I just turn it off and on because I am home. 
And then just like all the other ones, we still have the option to add some insulating board around his cage because it is glass. So I have all those things available. Now, as I said, I did order extra bulbs just in case. We have a few 100 watt bulbs and I do have 150 watt because this is what I use in our water monitors cage for their basking spot. So I always keep extra bulbs on hand. We have extra thermostats, even if they're the cheap ones. And we do have some extra fixtures and just in case something is faulty, doesn't work, that way I don't have to worry if for some reason something doesn't work in the middle of the night, we always have extra stuff. And then if you didn't see our video on our upgrades for Mr. Littlefoot, I'll leave a card right here. But Littlefoot, that is why we added his heat panel. Let's open this up so I can show you this a little bit better. He's chilling in his water. So that is why we added this 80 watt heat panel from Reptile Basics. It's the Vivarium brand. And we added a Herbstat too to control that. Was because we believed he needed supplemental heat for at night and he does, it does kick on now. His UV light took a dump so we ended up replacing that and then we ended the filtration system. As you can see, he's clogging it up. Um, an update on his filtration system. So that little piece down there. What happens is, is because I use this organic soil and it has these little kind of seed pods in it, what's happening is it's getting sucked into that and there is a little float in there and it's clogging up the float. So every other day or so, um, we have this where it can easily disconnect. So what I do is I just pull this whole piece off, pull it out, turn off the filter first, of course, pull this out and then this little black piece on the end literally just pops off. I dump it, put it back on, it flows nice. And then another thing I ended up getting to kind of clean out the bigger chunks is just a little fishnet for two bucks off of Amazon. And that is, it, it makes it really easy just to kind of scoop out a lot of this different chunky stuff. And then the filter turns on and it's working properly again. As you can see, Mr. Littlefoot likes to sit right in front of it. <laughs> what are you doing, you ding dong? Leave me alone, I'm in my water. Because there's not a lot of bacteria built up in the filter yet, the water is not super clear, but it is clean. So that's all I do. It'll clear up a little bit more, and then it kind of gets foggy as he pees and poops in it. But overall, the filter is working out great. And then Littlefoot still has his basking light with his tiles, and I've checked his hotspot temperature, and we're still maintaining an adequate temperature there, so I've not had to add any other heat source. Uh, the heat bulbs or the heat emitters don't really go above 150 watts that I have found. So if for some reason that's not enough, we will have to probably add a second one over here. But so far we're doing good of that, so I haven't had to add anything else. For our blood python Callisto who is up in our living room by herself, as you can see I added this because I got tired of the towels, so that's to kind of block her out. She has this, uh, I believe it's 11 or 12 inch heat tape. Uh, that is on a thermostat over here to maintain her belly heat. And then she also has a supplemental heat fixture up here with, I believe it's a 100 watt ceramic heat bulb that is on a thermostat to keep her ambient temperatures in her tub up. Now this has kicked on quite frequently during the night. So it is good that we added this. And I just keep this about eight to nine inches above the tub. It warms up the top of the tub, but not enough to uh, burn or to melt the plastic. So I can still touch this, but it really warms up the inside in order to keep her humidity and her ambient temperatures up. Now, just like you would with your family uh, and you have emergency preparations, you usually have extra food, extra water, especially if you live in an area where maybe you can get snowed in or maybe you're limited on products. Uh, we do the same thing here. I always keep extra canned food and extra water. Uh, we live down in the valley in Reno, so when we get a lot of snow here, it we don't get the trucks coming over the hill bringing in supplies. So sometimes we are limited on the supplies we can get. And that includes off of Amazon or anything else, a lot of things will be backed up. So usually before the winter months really hit, I usually stock up on extra bulbs, make sure I have extra fixtures, just in case something goes out. 
So if you live in an area where you could be affected by natural disasters or anything like that, or being snowed in for the winter, it is always a good idea to have one extra bins to put your animals in, extra heating elements, um, extra heat packs, anything like that. Um, the only thing that I don't have that I really need to get is some extra heat packs. If for some reason our electricity went out, I want to have a supplemental heat source. Uh, we don't currently have a generator, so I want to have something just in case. That way I could put my snakes in a bin and at least provide a heat pack for them that would last a little while. So that is the only thing that I'm still gotta get. I gotta get on Amazon and get that or wherever else. I don't know, I haven't really looked at where else. Leave a, leave a comment down below if you know another good place besides Amazon to get the heat packs. Like the, the same heat packs like you use for shipping. That is how we are getting our reptiles ready for the winter season. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And I hope you enjoyed the video. That is it for today. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay sane. Get out there and make your own footprints. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.